This is the 280SL that we bought off eBay some months ago as a painted shell with a box of bits and we've been slowly putting it back together. Now today was going to be the, the, the day that I re-trim this car but I have run into a small issue um, and the astute amongst you may see what that issue is. There should be two struts or box sections that run between here and here that separate the front footwell from the rear footwell. And when I bought this car, the guy that I bought it off mentioned to me that the previous owners had spent something like £7,000 on panels on this car. And I can certainly believe it because these floor footwells here have all been replaced. This The front footwell there is new. This panel looks new. And if you look at the front here, this section here also looks to be new. It's got a new fuel tank and there were various new panels in the boot. So somebody has indeed spent an awful lot of money on this car prior to me getting it, but they've also missed some things out. Luckily, these box sections are still available from Mercedes and they're not super expensive. So we have ordered a couple and they've just arrived from Germany today. Now our first job is going to be to get rid of all of the old beads of weld because the panels won't fit in there with that there and we're going to have a go at that with an angle grinder. Now that took a while and made a bit of a mess but eventually we got there. We just need to decide now how we're going to secure that in. You've basically got two choices. You can either just weld it in or you can use panel bond and glue it in. Now, unfortunately, someone broke into this garage a while back and stole my welder, so we're gonna be using the 3M panel bond to fix that in. The panel bond requires um, that you glue bare metal to bare metal, so what we'll do is we'll take this out, we'll sand off all the e-coat, and then we'll draw around it with a marker pen and we'll sand a bare metal channel and then we'll put the glue on and we'll probably use neodymium magnets just to push that down so it's clamped in there really well. We'll be using a 80 grit flap wheel just to take off that e-coat on the surfaces that we'll be gluing so we want to be left with shiny bare metal like that. After a few minutes, we're down to bare metal on the angle grinder. If you do have some little bits of e-coat left here where they, there's kind of a divot, don't be tempted to use the angle grinder to try and get rid of that, because what you'll do is you'll be grinding metal and you don't want to do that. If you've got a finger file or something like that, you can just go in there and touch it and that will get rid of it. Now, bear in mind that this also has to stick onto bare metal, so we're going to need like a centimetre and a half channel of bare metal. And to do that, rather than trying to do it on the car with the edge of an angle grinder, which you could do, I'm going to be using a finger file here to do it in the car. I mentioned this before, we don't have power in this garage, so we run all electric power tools, etc. off this EcoFlow Delta. It gives us four power points here. This has proved to be absolutely excellent. Um, with its unique selling point that it charges up to 80% in 20 minutes. So it's a really fast charging battery pack. The only thing I've found that um, you can't run on that is a circular saw, but things like the shop vacuum cleaner, the finger file, etc., run just fine on this. Indeed, my welder used to run fine on that as well, the MIG welder. Next up, we're just gonna mark where this is, and then we're gonna sand the channel got those center box sections to fit as best I can but what I don't have enough of is the 3M panel bond so we've got some of that on order while we're waiting for that to come we can crack on and trim some of this car um, namely we can do the center console and we can do the back panel here We'll start off doing the back panel here because it's relatively simple. The only thing that's a little bit tricky is that the carpet actually fits up under a lip. And because you'll be using contact adhesive, you've kind of come put that lip in first and then put the rest of it down. And um, to get that in, you've also got to take these side sections out, which haven't actually been affixed in properly yet anyway in our case. Remember to spray both the back of the carpet and the metal. Usually you're going to take the tape off before you put the carpet on, but in this particular case, the tape is helping me line up the carpet, so I'm going to keep it on.
Now originally that car would have come with a rear bench that just clips in and this is the one that came off the car, it's a bit broken. We do have another one off another SL that went to the graveyard and the carpet set does come with a piece of carpet to carpet that. But what we're probably going to do is use a rear seat conversion. Now, if you are planning on replacing that bench and putting a rear seat conversion in, this is really important. These particular ones came from SJS in Germany and SJS do two types. If your car has not previously had a seat conversion, i.e. if it didn't come like that from Mercedes, you will want to get this type here, which basically just hooks over the back like this. Okay, those two things just literally hook over. There's nothing else holding that in. Now, when we did the 1983 280 SL, which is sadly no longer with us, um, that is a completely different mechanism. First of all, it has a catch up here and it hinges forward. So when you buy this from SJS, it comes with two hinges fitted, which should fit into some metal slots down at the bottom there, which on this car are missing for some reason. You can just see where they used to be just there and there. They've been cut off for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but if you're just converting a bench to a rear seat, all you need is one of those. As I mentioned previously, I think this panel here has been replaced. What they haven't replaced is all of these little rubber grommets that fit in the holes here, here and here. So we'll get some of those from Mercedes. There should also be a piece of um, kind of matting that glues on there or lies in there, which we don't have. I'm not sure you can get that from Mercedes or not, but there should be some form of in insulation matting that goes over there. When you come to put this in, the center section once again just rests on top like that, not very sophisticated at all. This goes on next like so, and these cushions here literally just slot in, and they are the thing that keep the center section in place. This is how the rear seat ends up looking. If you've done it right, they should be aligned with the front of that and they should be centered, centered to that. Now I've still got a lot of work to do. This hasn't actually been stuck on properly yet. And obviously we're missing a piece of trim there, which we haven't taken from the parts car. And I've just realized, of course, I didn't order any rear seat belts when I ordered the seats. So I'll get some of those from SJS Germany as well. Now this is the central console here. We've previously um, painted this in another video uh, this is the carpet they sent here now my previous um experience with sjs in germany was terrible so i'm hoping that this experience is going to be slightly better than that certainly the carpet looks to be slightly better quality but as i say they are what i would call very cost effective some people might describe that as cheap and cheerful um so we're not going for premium quality carpet here we're going to make this car look a million times better than it did when we got it that's what we're aiming for I'm just going to carefully pull this away and then cut the glue using a sharp scalpel what you want to try and avoid doing is just trying to do this quickly and then end up taking huge chunks out of the um sort of molded backing here just do it slowly, it'll take a little bit of time. If you had a hairdryer, you could potentially be heating the glue and that would probably make your life much easier. That was a lot harder getting that carpet off there than I thought it would. You managed to break the vinyl here because whoever had this car previously used some black, um, I don't know what they used, sort of silicon type of adhesive to try and glue this flap down and unfortunately it was just so well adhered onto the carpet it was stronger than the actual vinyl but we'll be able to glue that and that shouldn't be a big problem you find that when you take the old carpet off there are great big holes in this foam or polyurethane whatever this is and um, you can fill those holes up just with some gorilla glue this will expand to three or four times what you put in there so you don't need very much and then what i'd suggest is just putting some masking tape over the top so that it expands to fill the holes. That's what we've done here and here and here. We're just going over it again to fill those holes even better. The next morning you can just take this off and you'll see that those holes are filled and then it's just a matter of sanding over this to smooth it down. This glue takes about 24 hours to dry and after it's dried, we're just gonna go over this with a angle grinder and a flat disc with a 40 grit on there 
and that will just smooth it all down. You won't even notice that those holes have been filled. Before you start spraying glue, it's really important to make sure that these, this corner here particularly lines up. Now what we're gonna to have to do is trim probably a centimeter off the edge here because trying to tuck that down under that vinyl is going to be almost impossible. It'd be easier if we just trim it slightly, but it is important before you start trimming that you make sure that the carpet actually lines up to the important corners, which is here and here. I'm just marking with a Sharpie an edge all the way around there. You can always trim off a little bit more if you need to, but um, you're basically only going to get one chance to get that right. Just using a sharp pair of kitchen scissors to cut that. And there we go, although I say so myself, that is almost perfect. It doesn't matter about these edges here being over because we can just trim this to exactly fit. What matters is that these that you're not short anywhere like there, for example. This needs to be pulled down a bit. What matters is you don't have any of this showing, which is abs this is absolutely fine like that. We're just using this trim fix adhesive, putting it on both sides, the carpet and the central console. Oops. Always do a test spray first to make sure that the nozzle isn't clogged, which this one is very slightly clogged. What we need to do is take off the it's actually really tricky putting this on because this is a contact adhesive and you only get one chance to get it right basically. So the way I'm doing it is to line up whoops, these corners first, like so, and actually just make sure it lines up along the top. And it's just a matter of trying to tuck this in there. We're just test fitting everything as we go along. The central console fits in there nicely. Um, we can't do any more trimming until we've panel bonded those two um, box sections in because the next bit of carpet that goes on is on top of the box sections. Then the bits of carpet that cover the sills go on and then these bits here go on last. I'm gonna finish this video here just loosely fitted the seats in here just to make sure that everything still fits um, in the next video I'm just going to panel bond in those two struts finish doing the carpeting um, possibly have a go at the trim which all the trim pieces on the central console all of which we've got and then after we've done that we are going to move on to the fuel system putting in the fuel tank connecting up the fuel lines I think we have to connect the starter motor and seeing if this car actually runs, turns over and starts. We got those cross members from Mercedes. Those are the two part numbers there. And the total was £132.84. We got the carpets and the rear bench seat from these guys here, SJS Car Styling in Germany. In total, we paid €867. Euros. Now, we didn't need the front seat covers because we already had them. Uh, but I noticed that although we've paid for the trunk there the rear carpet for the trunk that they didn't actually send that so hopefully they'll just be able to send that on when we order the seat belts we got six cans of this trim fix for just under 30 pounds from these guys here off ebay now if you are going to be trimming a car and also doing the under bonnet insulation etc you will need about six cans of this so don't be buying one or two cans running out and then having to get some more just get six cans in one go